Welcome back to the marketplace. This is very much an emergency episode of the marketplace as well, because there is big news that has just dropped. The man who's dropped it, of course, is the man who breaks all the big news in the NBL, Olgan Ulic from ESPN.com.au. Olgan, th- this is a really significant one, and there's some pretty detailed layers to this one as well. Yeah, Jack, I'm told that the Brisbane Bullets and Nathan Sobey have agreed to mutually part ways, uh, and that parting of ways clears the way for Nathan Sobey to sign with the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix wow. for NBL 25. And so this is someone who was in the All-NBL second team this past season, an Australian boomer, one-time Olympian. He is off that Bullets roster. He was on that roster for five seasons. He joins the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. I must admit, I'm, I'm confused, and I think a few people will be as well, because it was only last week on the marketplace, in fact, this week, I should say, on the marketplace, that Nathan Sobey's option was taken up and we spoke about him being at the Bullets next season. So what's changed? Yeah, so that option pickup uh, was sort of an auto pickup. There was a date that was set and when that date passed, it was automatically picked up. Now, since then, talks between both parties began to ramp up. And, and I'm told this was very much a mutual decision. of Nathan Sobey thinking that a, a different a change of scenery was best for him and the Brisbane Bullets thinking that in order for them to continue to progress their culture forward and to, and to really lean in to their new local core, uh, to move on from Nathan Sobey. So this was a mutual decision that really came to the fore over the past one to two weeks. Um, and they were ultimately able to find another team. That was the other part of this. The release could happen, mm. uh, but it was important for the Bullets to find another team who might be interested. The Southeast Melbourne Phoenix are a team that expressed their interest, uh, and they'll pay a small buyout fee uh, to the Bullets in order to, to bring Nathan Sobey on. Had they, do you know if they'd expressed an interest in Nathan Sobey prior to all of this happening? Could that have played a role in the Sobey and Brisbane conversation starting to ramp up? I think there was an understanding from Sobey's camp that the Phoenix would show some interest in Nathan Sobey. He's a Victorian. He's from Warrnambool, which is in regional Victoria. And so they knew that the Phoenix would be a team that had some interest in him and was sort of keeping tabs on him. And so when this opportunity came up, it made a lot of sense for every single party. Well, let's talk about where he's going first, and that is the Phoenix, who there are another couple of names that you intimated on the marketplace they are interested in. They no longer have Alan Williams. They do still have Mitch Creek, Nathan Sobey, Mitch Creek getting back together. The old 36ers yep. days. Yes, so those, those two are still quite close. They're friends. And so it looks like both are contracted and they'll both be as uh, part of the Phoenix going forward. Um, the, the Phoenix have been really proactive. We spoke about the review of their processes and that led to Alan Williams ultimately being relieved of his his duties. And uh, we recently learned of Reese Vague yep. also being part, uh, released from his contract too. And so this is a Phoenix team that is really trying to move forward, really trying to start anew. Uh, part of that was getting rid of some guys and, and part of it is also bringing in someone like Nathan Sobey who can fill sort of a, a local marquee spot. It does feel like from a Phoenix point of view, the winds of change are really sweeping through that place hard now. Yeah, it was it was really important for this Phoenix team internally to to get a marquee of some sort. Uh, they're in the mix for Bull Kowal. Uh, whether, that, whether this impacts that, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but they really wanted a, a marquee level talent and Nathan Sobey averaged more than 20 points a game this past season. The shooting splits weren't great, but he is someone who fills that marquee role. Well, early in the season, he was in the conversation for MVP and all NBL first team. So I don't think we should walk past that for sure. Then there's the Brisbane element. So I would imagine that there will be some Bullets supporters watching this and having read your reporting at ESPN.com.au that are really surprised that you would let a guy of the caliber of Nathan Sobey go. Yeah, there was a sense within the Bullets that they wanted to lean into the new local court that they have, which which is it starts with someone like Josh Bannon, Sam McDaniel, Mitch Norton, Isaac White, Tyrell Harrison. They really like these guys and really wanted to, to move forward with them and really lean into them. Uh, this is a good sign of proactivity from them as well. It frees up that money from Sobey's contract. And so it gives us a sense that this Bullets team isn't afraid to be bold about their decision-making going forward. They now have, we spoke about that war chest yeah. uh, over the, the last few Marketplace episodes. Uh, and it was something that I recently flagged was going to largely be used to pay the second years of contracts for a lot of those guys. Now they have an addition to that war chest. So now this really is a, a chunk of money that they can use to go and sign some high-level talent. And, 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 I would, and I'd say that they will be strongly looking at that import market. Yeah, and... Are we putting two and two together like we did last episode and come up with four? Are we thinking that that Nathan Sobey position is probably where they'll target an import? Are we thinking? I, I, I would be surprised if they don't go and chase some sort of guard 
uh, and four one two kind of yeah, and and a, a sort of guard that can really come in and make an impact. Yeah. It was it was something that something that we've been crying out for uh, to play next to Nathan Sobey, uh, but it seems as though they have now freed up a lot of money to go and bring in that really high high level guy. Big news, no doubt about it. Probably one that we weren't expecting this time a few yeah. days ago, but I think as we're learning and as we have learned already, things happen quick. And I'll say this: we saw it with Sam Menenga at the start of this sort of off season period. This is that was as close to what we've seen as a trade yeah, within the NBL. This is another one. Yep. So within the space of a few weeks, we've seen two basically trades to begin free agency, and free agency hasn't even opened yet. And so this is a sign of teams being more proactive and and players looking to to put themselves in better positions. Olin, thank you. We had to get together at very short notice, as you can tell. We found a room somewhere to get <laughs> together, but thanks for your time and another great story at ESPN.com. Thank you, Jack. Thanks for being with us. This has been a very, very quick and emergency edition of The Marketplace.